Hey everyone, greetings, greetings, greetings to all of you guys. Um, how's everything going this Sunday? How's everything going, everybody? My day is good, refreshed, just kind of chilly, just relaxing, reflecting a little bit, and preparing myself um, for the portal to come. So, just reflecting and just analyzing things in and out of my life. So, um, so yeah, so today we're going to speak about the importance of hair. And I kind of just got my hair out today. I just washed it, so it's, I'm going to do some sun drying, but it's just out. It's just natural. So, hair, 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 hair. There's so many programs wrapped around hair. A lot, a lot of programs. There's so much deprogramming we have to do in that department. Um, let's start off with um, what hair is and how important it is for your hair to be on your head. Let's start with that. So if you can imagine, hair is the extension of your nervous system. It's right here where your brain is, right there. Like the nerves come out. These are the nerves, right? So, the, the more natural your hair is in its natural element, the more easy it is to receive the light codes that the sun gives off. Your hair is like a transmitter and a receiver. It transmutes energy and it receives energy and it transforms energy. Clear quartz crystals have a very important um, compound in there, silicone. And clear quartz uh, crystals, we know, amplify things because it, it, can, it can receive things, it can give things to clear quartz. Well, clear quartz has a key component, silicone. And your hair also has silicone. Computers carry this. So with that just being said, you need your hair to be able to communicate back and forth to the spirit realm to the ethers to source if you look around an insect every type of insect has hair on them that hair is their antennas that hair is their protection their shield your eyebrows your eyelashes all of this catches dirt think about if you ain't had no eyelashes i mean just really think about how it would be you're st- Stuff will always get in your eye. I mean, think about the little stuff that just sneaks by in your eye now when you do got eyelashes. You know, the hairs in your nose. Everything will be going up in your nose. Soon as you breathe, you just, everything should be sucking up in your nose. But that hair there is ventilation to catch that all in there. That's why you get boogers. Boogers is like dust particles and everything that you're, that your nose stopped and collected for you. So, um, going back into into the hair in your head, um, even in ancient, as we call ancient times, the importance of hair was always upheld. A lot, a lot of people kept their hair locked. And what happens is, the hair knows that it's one. So when you leave the hair alone, you leave your hair alone, your hair automatically start fusing together. Because those are nerves, those are cells, they're, 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 they're communicating with each other. They're sending signals, they're binding together. They know if they bind together that they're stronger. When I was in Germany, the Germans used to call their hair, hairs. I'm like, why are they calling it hairs? Like it's a person more than one. It makes sense. Each individual strand of your hair is a cell, is a, is a, is a, is a, is a, um, a nerve. And it connects with other nerves. So, it, like, if you can see what my hair, like, my hair is locked up. You see that? That's an, in, that's an antenna. That's a bond. They're all coming together. I'm pulling in information. My antennas are getting tighter. This is like, just see this is like energy, just like fusing together, fusing together. So I can receive divine messaging. 
no, I'm not telling everybody to go out there and eat bread and meat and all that. Because you can still be natural and, and rock your hair out natural and still get it. But protect your crown. Don't be putting chemicals in your crown because you're not going to be getting the messages. Also, the sun in the daytime, like right now my hair is uh, drying. But in the daytime, you should put your hair up at its highest peak because your whole hair is an antenna. Put your hair up at its highest peak and let the sun receive all, I mean, let your hair, your antenna, receive all the light codes that it needs to receive for that day. It's going to stimulate and it's going to open that, that first eye. When you got the connection with the sun going through your antennas and through your first eye, do you know the hindsight that you see when you have the divine alignment? Your hair is very important. All of this, all of these are antennas. I just let it do what it do. All of it. It's just, I got fatter pieces back here. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's just fusing together. It knows what to do naturally. Your hair knows what to do naturally. It's coming together because the more it comes together, the stronger it becomes. And the more it's easier for it to receive information in the ethers through your antennas. Just like insects pick, on, pick up on things. They pick up on danger. They pick up on when it's time for the, the move. They do that through the antennas. We've been, we, we've been, we, we've been programmed with hair. Especially as people of color or people with quote unquote uh, nappy or or a black hair or whatever labels y'all want to put on it, this kind of hair, spiral hair, is a lie. It's kinky and it's quote unquote nappy or whatever you want to put on it because it's alive. It's alive. It wants to be up. It wants to be kinky. It wants to be together because it knows that it needs to receive the code. In order to receive the codes, it knows to come together. You have the divine spiral, the ether, the nine, the completeness. Your hair is complete. It's natural hair. I'm speaking about natural hair. It's alive. We must feed it. We must nourish it. But we must feed and nourish it with the right thing. Letting it get sun, not doing nothing with it. You have hair. You don't have fur. You don't collect bugs in your hair. When your hair is natural, bugs, you're not going to create, you're not going to create bugs. You don't have to always wash your hair constantly, every day. You don't have to do that. Some people have to do that because they don't have, their hair is not alive. So their hair starts to stink. And then their hair can get bugs. Because they don't have natural hair. This is alive. This is like a plant. You don't always have to. Even the plant has certain type of bugs that lives in there. But it's in harmony. It doesn't infest in the hair. It doesn't take over the hair. Your hair is like a plant. It's like a tree with individual branches. Look at these individual branches on one branch. But individual branches coming together. So it's very, it's just very important to just be in tune with your hair. I'm gonna share a little experience with you guys before I go deeper. So when I was in, um, when I was in Germany, um, the first time I figured out that my hair was alive and I had a connection and I felt my nerves breaking was when I first noticed that my hair started to lock together. Before I would pop my hair, I would always pop my hair. I did not want it to lock together. And so one day, I went to pull my hair apart. I felt it. I felt it in my brain. I felt it in my brain. And I felt sad. It's like I felt my hair going, no! Oh, seriously. That's really how it sounds. Like as it spread it apart, I heard the spread. I heard the cracking and everything of just breaking my hair apart when it wanted to loose. So I thought about that for three days. And then I became, I became aware of, of my thought. And I asked myself, why am I thinking so hard about just, you know, breaking my hair apart? Just hair. And then that's when I realized the connection I had with my hair and how it irritated my brain cells because your hair is your nerves. So I felt that. And it was at that moment that I knew how important the hair was, especially on my head. So I'm going to take it a little bit deeper. So 
we're gonna get onto body hair, armpit hair, because we're so, 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 so programmed there. Whoa, this is gonna take some reverse psychology for some of you guys that's entering over the age of ninety four, and some of you guys might not, and it's okay. I'm just here to speak to the ones that really get the message. So, I'm gonna share my experience. That's the best way to explain to you guys is just to share my experience. Um. I used to be wax queen. Like, I would always go and just go get a wax. Shave my arms. I would go get a wax. Um, I was not having that. Mm-mm. Won't about to have that. Because, you know why? I was programmed to think that hair was long. I never sat down and thought, well, damn. It makes no sense. Every, what, three weeks to a month, I got to get a wax. The hair keeps coming back. I go get a wax. The hair keeps coming back. I go get a wax. The hair keeps coming back. I shave my arms. The hair come back in about a week. I shave my arms. The hair come back. I'm like, damn, this hair don't stop. This hair flows like water. Your hair flows like water no matter how much you chop it down. It knows how important it has to be. It just keeps growing. I sat down and thought about that every month spending about fifty, sixty dollars on a wax because I tried to get rid of something that had to be there. It knew it had to be there. That's why I kept going back. It's just like the water, it flows. So I started seeing it like that. I was like, wow, this hair must be something very important. The creator would have never made my avatar like this with hair if hair wasn't supposed to be there now i want my religious people to really hear this one i want y'all to really hear this one and i want y'all conscious people to really hear this one you claim so much to be in touch with the divine source and the source and the divine source and all of this and holy moly and god this and god that but yet you don't even accept God's avatar or body or whatever you want to call this vehicle. You don't even want to accept it. You want to take everything off of it. Ew, it's nasty to have hair in your legs, but that's manly. Who said that? If the creator made you and if it was for man, why would the creator put hair on you then? Just think about it. Let it soak in. Butterfly gets flew by me. Transformation. So anyway, why would you have the hair on you? It's not supposed to be there. Who told you? Who programmed you? Who programmed you that and told you that? Did social media do that? Did social media left and right have commercials about shaving and shaving and about, you know, movies about, oh, you got hair? Just all this programming. Is in your brain. Some of you shave and think you do it just because you want to, but don't even know you're doing it because you programmed to think that it's nasty. The hair on this special, everything, all of these hair on your body is antennas. When you take the hair off of your yoni or your phallus, your penis, whatever you want. You're taking away the protection. Before we had clothes on, not saying we was always naked. We weren't always naked. We did wear clothes, but we wore different type of clothes. We wore different type of materials. We had to protect ourselves. Women would have the skirts on. We didn't have panties. We let our yoni be out and free. And with that being said, we had hair to protect us. So dirt, bacteria would get in. You think the hair is just there for fun and decoration? Everything on this avatar has a function. You better get with the functions. You better know the manual script. You know that manual script of your car inside out. You know when the check engine light come on or you know when the freaking light is out and the tire is is, is flat, but you don't know how your avatar works. You don't know why the hair on your avatar is there. You better get with the program and read the program book. So 
I don't even know where I was at. But I was just flowing. I'm going to bring it back to this. The, the hair, um, the pubic area is important because when you connect, if a man connects with a woman or a woman connects with a woman or whoever you want to connect with, we dropping labels. It's about connecting with energy, not physically. Get out your lower chakras and get in God's state. When you connect with whoever you want to connect to, when y'all bodies is rubbing together, y'all antennas is rubbing together, you are in tune with each other. You are receiving and sending signals to them and vice versa. It's a magnetic connection. That area magnetically connects. The creativity happens then. But when you shave it all off, it's a lack of connection. Now, I'm not telling you you can't shave. You can shave if you want. You can leave a little bit on if you want. You can clean it up. Ain't nothing wrong with cleaning it up if you want to clean it up and leaving a little bit of hair there. Because you leaving that little bit of hair there, at least you're still getting a connection. It's still there. It's okay to put your, your um if you want to put it in sacred geometry shapes. Cut your hair into a, shake, uh, a, a geometry shape. Really pull in the energy. Put the yoni in the upside down triangle, uh, uh, sy uh, symbolizing divine feminine energy. Let that energy pour, uh, permeate right there, like that. Do you a strip? Do what you want to do, but just know that they be that some hair need to be there. Trim, cut it because even if you're trimming it, your hair always your hair falls out anyway. Your hair always falls out and starts new. So even by you trimming your hair, you're trimming the old and you're bringing in the new. But the hair is still there. You're not cutting it all. It's still there. It's okay to trim. I don't cut my hair off my arms all the way off. I trim it. I don't cut it all the way off. I cut the old hair off and I let the new hair that's stronger, that's healthier flow. We need these hairs. Now I'm going to take it deeper pheromones we have to be able to smell each other y'all can smell me from all the way over there listening to my video y'all can smell my smell because it's a metaphysically smell it's not a physical human smell you can physically humanly smell people's smell but it's really that unseen smell that's attracting everybody that light that that that, that sexual mate what is to stink? There's another program. What is to stink? To stink. Where do we get the idea that something smells good and something stinks? Where, we, where do we get that programming? Think. Stop real quick. Think. When we was born and we was little, our parents. Your parents is your biggest programmer. They start the programming off. Think about when your mama was changing your diaper. And she said, ew, you stink. You didn't quite know what it was. You heard the vibration of how they said it. You know she says it when you take when she taking your diaper off and you take a, you're doing something. Either you're peeing or you're shitting. Excuse the language if that offends anybody. Then you associate that with, okay, I'm using the bathroom. That must stink. That means it stinks. Okay, yeah, that stinks. Your mom, your dad, they smell your feet. And they smell it. They go, ooh, your feet stink. Okay, so that word stink is associated with my feet too. If my feet smell a certain way, then that means it stinks. Okay, okay, that's what stink means. Okay. You might fart. And they might say, you stink. Now, now, really think about it. You never knew what stink was. Your innocent mind didn't know what, what is stink. It didn't know it until your parents programmed it into you. What is to stink? What is that? What is to smell good? What is ugly? What is pretty? What is ugly? Got that from your parents too. You dress a 
certain type of way, wanted to wear your hair a certain type of way. That's ugly. Don't do that. Your mama and your daddy and your friends. They all programmed you to think something's ugly. Oh, he ugly. Oh, she's beautiful. He all right. It's all about perspective, your, your perspective, but what really is it, though? Where are you getting your thoughts of ugly? It's all about energy and read each other's energy. Energy. The inner part of us. What is ugly? What is stink? So let's bring it back. You need these pheromones to connect with people. I'm going to share my experience with pheromones. And the brother, he's probably on here. <laughs> so I met this brother. And when we, I knew it was divine that we met. I knew it had to be some type of healing, some type of connection. But when we first talked, it wasn't like a straight up connection. I knew we had to meet, but it wasn't a straight up connection. He had cologne on. So I couldn't really smell him. I couldn't really smell him. I, I vibe with him, but I won't really vibe with him. Now, the second time we met up, Bay Bay, he had no cologne on. He had natural smell. It smelled so amazing. It made me feel comfortable. It made me feel like we were connected, like we were one. Like I can feel him. And it wasn't even in a sexual way. It stimulated me because it felt so comfortable. And it felt, it brought me to like smelling that floor from somebody that was in a natural element. We need to be able to smell each other. That made me feel like I could be comfortable because I smelled that person. Sometimes you don't know how, people could talk a good game, but if you smell a person and see that person's energy, then you know a person. That's how animals connect, they smell. Why do you think dogs smell each other's butt? They ain't smelling each other's butt for the fucking fun, buns and tickles for it. They smelling each other to pick up on the pheromones to know that animal. Know what they ate, what they thinking, how their diet is. That's another thing. You may think you stink because you ain't eating right. You are sweating out and you detoxing what you put in your body. So examine your body first. Then you might be quote unquote stinky. Clean your body out. Alkaline, water, water, fruit, fruit, raw, sun. I noticed that if I'm eating like a burrito or if I go to eat some tortilla chips and I've been eating that straight up and then I sweat, I can tell a difference because I've been putting that mucus in my body. So examine your body. Smell your body. We have natural smells. It's nothing to stink. And what I noticed is that I went to new yoga. And what I noticed is that we were all hot, sweaty. We was in the sweat, in the sweat lounge. We were sweat because of the sun. And nobody stink. It's the clothes. This hot, heavy t-shirt I got on right now. I ain't got no deodorant on. Hmm. My arms still smell good quote unquote to smell good but i got this hot old t-shirt on it's making me sweat it's cotton now if i ain't have no shirt on i'm in my natural element you need to sweat to cool off but when you got these clothes on and stuff like that it's getting the clothes getting all moist and smells coming out of real smell come from the clothes go outside naked one day and sweat and see how you smell now, but if your diet ain't right, you might smell something. But it's so important that we connect with our hair, y'all. Even on the legs. Who says having hair on your legs is nasty? Who said that? Where you get that from? Where you get that from? But you love God. You love Buddha. You love Allah. You love Source. But as soon as they put hair on your body, it's nasty. It's manly. I gotta cut it off. It, it, it attracts the odor. It attracts the odor maybe because your body ain't clean. Your mind ain't clean. Think about that. It attracts the odor because you think it has an odor. You create the odor with your thoughts. Think about that. The minute I stopped and broke through the programming of hair and what it is to have hair, I started thinking more on the spiritual realm of why I have hair and I got out of my lower chakras you gotta rise above your lower chakras 
This is the avatar body. Why are you tripping? You're more than this hair in this body. This is just a tool to connect you to your higher self. Get out those human emotions again. The more I got out of the programming, the more I noticed how I smell good. Just how my body smells, how my arms smell, how my feet smell, how my nose smells. Just the smell and me knowing that how people I attract, people will listen. How people just turn their head because they smell it. They're like, oh, baby, don't let me be going out feeling all hot and bothered because then my smell really going to attract people. Your smell attracts your mate. It's like a mating thing. All animals do it. All the insects, all the amphibians, all the mammals, whatever, all of them. Everybody's in tune. The plants. Everybody in tune. Let's get in tune. Rid our bodies of these chemicals so we can come at one. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with doing your hair if you want to do your hair. But you're more than this human body. Let your hair lock up. Let it do it do. Who said that to let your locks lock up like this? That's raggedy and you dirty and you mangy. Who said that? Who made them words up? Who made those words up? Who said that? Who wrote the definition? Deprogram your mind. Know how the subconscious mind works. Once you know how the subconscious mind works, This life will come to you. You don't have to take this seriously. You don't take this. Just having this human experience is not serious. You have the hair. You have a beard. You think it's here for a shit. But seek the divine mind. The hair under our arms, on our yoni, even in our butts. Trim it. Cut it if you want to. Even the hair on your butt protects you. Everything protects you. Hair on your toes, on your hands. Protects you. I talk a lot. So I got a little bit of hair right here. To catch anything that falls in my mouth because I talk so freaking much. <laughs> I even have hair in my face. Because I'm receiving information from the hair. My antenna is always coming up. Embrace it. Leave the hairs on your face. Some of us have hairs on our face. So I kind of went in. Hope you guys got the message. I'm not trying to make anybody believe anything. Just get in tune to it and listen. And respect your body and love your body and how it flows. Let everything in your body flow. Be the flow. Let the hair flow. Tame it. Maintain it. But let it flow. I love you all. It's Icy Snow. For my YouTube family, you can follow me on Instagram, Icy underscore love 511. You can find me on Facebook, Icy Snow. I love all of you. And I say that with my heart because I know truly that I love myself. And to love myself, I have to love you all because you are me. I am you. I'm just trying to pull all of my cells together so we can become one. So we can rise above. Okay, you guys? So keep having a marvelous, marvelous, magical, magical day. I'm going to enjoy mine. I'm going to take the sun. I'm going to overdo it. I love you.